Hey everyone, Perry here, and I'm especially excited for this review right now. One, because we're about to review Roma, which I've been looking forward to, and also, I'm doing this review with the one and only Adam Chitwood of hey Collider.com. If you are not familiar with Adam's work, please, immediately after you watch this video, and you watch all the other video reviews we're gonna do, go to the website, check it out. Adam's awesome. Uh, so, Roma. Yes. Uh, first impressions. I loved it. Uh, I think this movie is a masterpiece. It is the latest film from Alfonso Cuaron. Uh, it's his next movie after winning the Best Director Oscar for Gravity. He, of course, directed Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Children of Men, Itu Mama Tambien. This film is very much in the vein of Itu Mama Tambien. It's going back to his native roots. He said that he wrote and directed it, he edited it, he shot it. 90% uh, of the film is based on his own true life story. Uh, it takes place in 1970 and it follows kind of the the crumbling of a family and then that family coming back together as told through the eyes of their housekeeper. Um, and it's just a sight to behold. Uh, Cuaron, he normally works with cinematographer Emmanuel Lubezki who won three Oscars in a row for Birdman and mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of other films. Um, he shot this one himself and the film is in black and white. It's shot in uh, using the Alexa 65 cameras, which are these high quality digital cameras and it's presented in HDR and it's gonna be on Netflix. So if you have uh, HDR 4K capabilities, you'll get to see it that way. But every single image is crisp. The camera is always separate and away from what's going on. And you feel like you're, you're allowed to watch these memories of Coron of what happened to his family and it becomes, it, it builds sequence by sequence and moment by moment mm -hmm. until it just kind of like washes over you and you feel like you wanna step in and do something because you become so emotionally overwhelmed. Um, but you can't because the, the, I mean, the direction of this thing is astounding. It I don't really understand, is. I don't understand how he did it. Uh, I don't really get it either. And you know, I knew this one was going to Netflix, but when you just brought it up, cause I, I just saw this like a couple of hours ago I want people to have the opportunity to see this on the big screen like I did because the visuals are absolutely stunning and the amount of detail he captures too. I mean, the, you might have seen this in the teaser trailer, but even just the water washing over yeah. the street at the very beginning and what, what that one teeny tiny frame, that one thing winds up capturing, it's something that it sets the scene and it affects you and the second the movie opens, you get a firm grasp of just of, of the tone and the world and everything that he's building and then with the camera work too, the one thing that I appreciated more so than anything was how his camera movements are and how they are consistent in this way throughout the entire film where it'll kind of just sit there and slowly pan back and forth in every single setting. And when the large majority of a movie like this takes place in one house, and in particular in a family house, and yeah. you have that kind of imagery to pair with those characters, it feels lived in. It feels like you are in the thick of it with them. And really just seeing this whole story through that perspective and watching the family, and especially her relationship with the kids too. Yeah. There, there was a, a real warmth and genuine chemistry there, and it's in, incredibly moving and powerful. And uh, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend catching this one. And I'm suspect, it's difficult right now to start making predictions for yeah. award season, but it's, you know, because there's so many things in play, it's hard to look at this one and think that it isn't going to be something that is, you know, one of the priorities to discuss yeah. from now all the way through to the actual ceremony. Well, I mean, it is, it's masterful and the casting as well. So the woman who plays Cleo, the, the housekeeper, her name is Yalitza Aparicio. Uh, she's a teacher in Mexico, and her performance is astounding, yeah. what she does in this film. Uh, it is a Spanish language film, but don't let that deter you. Uh, it's absolutely one of the best films of the year. It's one of the best directed films I've ever seen. I mean, Cuaron is known for his long takes. Mm -hmm. uh, the Children of Men long take uh, that goes through diff various different settings, or the car crash in that film, obviously Gravity. This film has a lot of long takes, but the camera is static. And so you're forced to sit there and live in the scene. And it's on the performers to bring the emotion of that scene. Coron is, 
is showing you how he's going to show you what's going on, but it's on them to bring the emotion, and they do an incredible job. It also has a almost like an epic quality to yes, it, it's where epically intimate is it, how I would epi it. Epically intimate. You you spend an extended period with this group of people too. That you know by the end they feel they, they feel like real people that you genuinely lived with and yeah. got to know. And when you see their journey throughout the entire film and where they wind up in the end and what that ending means to them and means to their future, that's why it's so moving and it's going to stick with you because he really. He laid the groundwork in every technical respect from a storytelling perspective and you could just see it. And I've seen it with a couple of movies here at TIFF so far. You could see when a director has such a, not even just a firm understanding of exactly what he's trying to achieve in a movie, but also just that pure passion. And this is one of those instances where you could feel that connection and that passion just radiating through the screen. And uh, it, it, it grabs hold pretty damn tight. It does, and I said this in my written review as well, it's, it's a sight to behold to watch one of the greatest filmmakers living today working at the absolute top of his game, mm -hmm. and that's what Roma is. You're seeing a master filmmaker, one of the best we've ever seen, doing a film that has, has never been done like this before, and in such a way that it's just, it's astounding. It yeah. will, it, it's a gut punch emotionally. I, I consciously don't want to describe too much of the plot because yeah. it, it's, it's a film that builds moment by moment until you just kind of get this flood of emotions. And going. the more we discuss it, the more I think of little moments because there are, okay, there are a couple of big moments that are yeah. clearly some of the biggest beats in the entire film, but then there are other little, little tiny things and even supporting characters where they almost feel like background players to a point and then all of a sudden they have that moment yeah. and you never forget them. So really, this is a movie where I think every single scene and every single creative decision he makes has value and it all comes together so, so well. Um, you have a head start on this because you've already done the written review. Uh, what did you give Roma? Uh, I believe I gave it an A. Okay. Uh, like I said, it, I, I think it's a masterpiece. That may be weird to say having just seen it, but uh, I hope you'll agree when you see it on Netflix. And I honestly do think, I mean, so Netflix is considering potentially doing a, a wider theatrical release for this film. I hope so. Before it hits Netflix. This is a conversation that's ongoing to hopefully keep filmmakers like Coron in the Netflix business. But I think if you have, because the camera is so far away from the characters so often, this is a film that I really will want to savor on my television, on Netflix, on, on a 4K television, and mm -hmm. sit there and enjoy. Every single frame of this movie is a painting. Every single frame is spectacular and there's stuff to take in and soak in. And obviously if you've seen Quaron's other films, you know he's a very uh, metaphorical filmmaker, very into symbolism, mm -hmm. so there's a ton of that to watch out for in this film as well. Yeah, um, I'm gonna come in right behind you there and give it an A minus. This is an incredibly striking film in every single respect and I can't recommend it enough. If the theatrical distribution or the wider one does happen, I would recommend it. I would recommend seeing it on the big screen. Yes. But you know, in in you describing the the 4K at home experience, there's also something that could be special about. You know, I, I have a habit of queuing things up on my uh, on my Netflix on my iPad and just <laughs> having it in your face in such close proximity. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't want to hear you watching an Alfonso Cuarón film on your iPad. <laughs> no, but just you know, when it's like, especially if like you're laying in bed or on a plane <laughs> or something, and just everything like washes away yeah, around yeah. you, and all you have is this is this screen that's right in your face. Sure. I, I guess there there is a charm to it, or maybe it's just me wanting to rewatch this movie, and I think that's most certainly <laughs> the case. Thank you guys for watching this review right now, whether you're watching it on an itty bitty screen or a really <laughs> big one. We appreciate it. Don't forget to like and share it and keep an eye on Collider Quick for even more tip coverage.